Que pasa, everybody. Thank you so much for watching Bob Survival. We're here on the North Shore of Massachusetts, and I've already mentioned it in a few videos, the drought. So there's not as many things to eat. We're out here just looking for different edible stuff and seeing what we can find if we were in a situation where we're in a forest, there's a bunch of drought, it's September, what can we find to eat? Let's go find something to eat. Blueberry bush right here. And even though there are no blueberries, you can totally take the leaves and put it in a tea or even eat the leaves. Yuck, I'd rather have it in a tea. Mm. Oh wow, you can almost taste the blueberry. Weird. We got ourselves some shag bark hickory nuts and these are edible and sweet. You can also throw them at someone if you need to defend yourself. But look, very pretty. I always find these right here and the drought does not seem to affect them. Partridge berry. See, my friends. Oh, and look. This is Japanese barberry. These will turn red and you can eat these up. These seem to, ow, stung me, Jesus. These seem to bloom in the early fall. So, ow, again, watch out for the horns here. Horns, thorns for crying out loud. Japanese barberry. I think probably the saddest part of this drought, at least for me, is the fact that there's like no mushrooms. I have to go up to the White Mountains of New Hampshire to be able to find some. Around here, you got almost nothing, folks. There's no mushrooms. No mushrooms. Where are they? Got some goldenrod right here. Honestly, these have so many health benefits that it would take a very long time to explain, but look them up. Lots of nutrition. You can use the flowers or the leaves. Make a nice tea. Have nutrition. Nice. These actually look pretty okay. Check it out. These northern red oak acorns will mess up your stomach if you just eat them straight up like this. You actually have to leach out the tannins. And, ooh, little bug went by me. You gotta leach out the tannins of these. Soak them in water like two or three times at least. You'll actually see the color. I've done it before. It'll turn very dark. And then, after a while of doing that, you can roast these up, put some salt, and they'd be delicious. Got some clover here. Tastes like lemon. Lots of vitamin C. It's like the tallest little clover guy I've ever seen. Look at that. You see that guy moving in there? It's like a little mini grub. And what's weird is you could totally eat that. Ugh, look at that guy. Pine tree. I've made a video of this before. I've mentioned it many times. Goddamn airplanes. You can eat the cambium inside the bark. And the sap is beneficial. Thanks a lot, planes. This is like a universally known thing within wilderness survival and foraging is that pine needles have a massive amount of vitamin C. Throw that in a tea and you'll be feeling good. This type of hemlock, this Eastern hemlock, you can also throw this in a tea, but you gotta be careful. There are certain types of hemlocks, no bueno. This is good right here. I'm always getting messed up by the planes, folks. So I found what I could find in this forest. We're gonna go to a different forest, about 10 miles away. Maybe it'll be some better conditions, some good stuff. I stepped in crap. Mmm, I love it. I stepped in doo-doo, yay. New forest, let's see if we find anything new. I mean, most of these forests are pretty similar, so. I don't imagine myself being too surprised, but maybe I'll get lucky. A little bit of dandelion. Mmm. I like it. I like dandelion. It'll be perfect in a salada. Also known as salad. Check this stuff out. It's got an interesting name. It's called Devil's Beggar Tick. It's an invasive weed, but this is medicinal. You can cook the young leaves and the young stems. It'll help you with the urinary tract infection, as well as other things. Look at that. You'd never know. It's 
It's what you call a drought, folks. There's no water. And it seems like no rain, no water means no tasty mushrooms. This uh, forest is full of oak trees, yet no chicken in the woods all season. Got to be traveling a little bit more north toward New Hampshire and Maine to get that stuff. This place sucks. We're going to go ahead and wrap it up. As you see, still in drought conditions, you can still find edible stuff to eat. And I find foraging to be very underrated. You gotta get a shelter to prevent hypothermia. You gotta stay dry. You gotta get fire and all those things. But nutrition, you have to learn what to eat. I know it doesn't seem necessary manly as opposed to like I'm with an ax just smashing stuff all over the place or, or building huge log cabins, but it's extremely important. Foraging, knowing what you can eat in your area is huge. You gotta get vitamins, you gotta get nutrition. If you're ever in a wilderness survival situation, getting those different antioxidants and different vitamins could really help you throughout a situation. You need yourself a shelter, you need yourself a fire, you need yourself water, but you absolutely need to know all the different things you can eat. It's not logical to think that you're immediately gonna go ahead and find animal meat or something like that. So it's good to know those Little plants that you had no idea you could eat. Learn about them, eat them up. It's good times. So anyways, I wanna thank you guys so much for watching Vaz Survival. Hope you enjoy the rest of your summer. It's days away. I'm not a giant fan of the fall and the winter. I do look forward to some of the mushrooms you can get in the fall. And I'll, I'm gonna to continue to have a good time and be outdoors and do a lot of things in the fall and winter, but it's always bittersweet when the summer is ending because everything is alive. And, and, and I love when everything's alive and you can find different things to eat. And it's just, for me, it's more pretty, okay? So, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. Take it easy.